Morning or afternoon. I'm going to call the meeting to order. This is the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council meeting. Um, do we have anybody on Zoom? Three on Zoom. Where are they? Uh, Mark Helwig, Jeff, uh, Hi. Sly, and uh, Ryan Hi. Reed. Good here. And Lorraine is trying to get on, Mr. Chairman. Trying to get on Zoom? Yep. All right. I might just have her call in here, though. All right. Got Mr. Senior here. All right, let's do, let's do a roll call. So, Tweed, we'll start with you. Just state your name. Yep, yep. Tweed Schumann here. Nick Sainer, Justice Point. Elaine Smith, here. For LCO Tribal Court. Leon Chapania, LCO Tribal Court. Timothy James Carroll, Citizen, Local. John Yackel, Circuit Court. Jeff Johnson, Jailmaster. Yuri Hilgender, Citizen Member. Doug Morotech, Chair. Tom Hall, County Administrator. In the back, can you state your name for the record? Yes, Mark Pelwick, uh, County Board. And you're here, you're here on behalf of Mr. Boquette? Yes. Mr. Helwig? Yes. Present? Yes. Uh, Mr. Schley? Present. Mr. Reed? Uh, good afternoon, Ryan Reed, Public Defender's Office. And then, did Lorraine get on or no? No, but I'll get her. All right, so we do have a quorum. Madam Clerk, are we in compliance with the open meetings law? Yes. All right, let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, the meeting agenda has been presented. Are there any questions on the agenda? <laughs> Hearing none, we're going to move Looks forward. Uh, minutes from the previous meeting, as the committee had a chance to review the minutes from the last meeting. Now I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve as presented, Mr. Chairman. A motion for Mr. Schumann. Second. Second for Mr. John, uh, Lieutenant Johnson. Um, 
Any discussion on the motion? Hearing no discussion, call for the vote. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. All right, next we have Mr. Sainer. Is it Sainer? Yes. From Justice Point? Yes. This is for discussion and possible action. Um, what would be the action that we'd be looking at, Mr. Mr. Hobb? Well, it depends on what, what we talk about. I mean, it's, it's, and that's, I'm wondering if LCO should go first and then we can get to Justice Point. Because the action would be to accept or ratify or, or motion to the full board approval of a contract, right? We don't have a contract. Yeah. Um, I think, Nick, you told us yesterday that you don't have a contract yet. I haven't had a finalized contract yet with the, like the last it's piece. It's not that finalized because it hasn't been approved yet because we're waiting on the funding. So uh, the funding, the funding is in the budget, the 2021 budget, which is going to be approved tonight. So the funding uh, county portion is uh, within that document. So if that budget gets approved as is, we would have approval from the board and funding. All right, Nick, the floor is yours. Yeah, I, I mean that's that was where that's the only update that I had is that we we're just waiting for the last bit of information. So, well, you can update us on your meetings with yeah, the tribe and what services that were going on with that. So, yes. So, um, Mr. Helwig, can you hear Mr. Sainer? Yes, I can. Thank you. So uh, the services that we were talking about, and and the, this was the draft document that I shared, I think the last time we met, was talking about the specific responsibilities for our program. The one thing that we really wanted to focus on was capturing the data and replicating that report um, that had been generated both in 2018 um, by Justice Point and then 2019 by Diana, Diane McNamara. Yep. Um, in order to help Sawyer County continue to provide and gather information yep. for a competitive bid for the treatment alternative diversion uh, grant application, which will be coming out sometime in 2021. Um, additionally, we'll be doing pretrial supervision for in individuals that are ordered by the court to receive pretrial supervision, uh, drug testing. Uh, the piece that I would certainly love to have another and further conversation with the Sheriff's Department was just to firm up sort of the, our activities with regards to work release, ensuring that we have all of our sort of uh, business rules in place for who to monitor and how to monitor and how to provide violations. But that work can certainly happen after a contract is approved. And, we can finalize those uh, policies and procedures then. Um, with regards to the tribe, our conversation really focused about around uh, brokering uh, community-based services for individuals that are coming through the criminal justice system. Looking at the data that we uh, saw both in 2018 and 2019, there were significant numbers of individuals that both had uh, a need for additional mental health and substance abuse screening. Um, our goal would be to connect them, obviously, with community-based resources, both locally in Sawyer County, but also uh, tap into tribal resources and make sure that individuals know how to access those services as well. The big piece, the other op, a piece that we wanted to talk, uh, we talked a lot about with the tribe was identifying gaps in resources, which again affects both the tribe and Sawyer County residents. Um, and uh, hopefully being able to provide some additional guidance and information to this body and obviously Sawyer County as a whole as to where the gaps are in services and where there may be need additional needed services. Um, that's sort of the, uh, an overview at a 3,000 foot view. If you'd like me to get, uh, Mr. Chair, if you'd like to be- So the question that came up last time was your capacity. Has there been discussion about how many people would be eligible to participate in your program and is that compatible with what our current court system is is processing. Well, we had hoped to schedule a meeting between our the last CJC meeting and the CJC meeting, and that for some reason, obviously, a lot of things happened between the time that that conversation didn't occur. So um, the information that I have is still what I proposed in the budget. So what is your what is your what is your body capacity that you're offering over the county? Bring up what I proposed. Sorry, I can't find it right now. It was in the document that I submitted at the last CJCC meeting. Give me a second. So 
So while you're considering that. Yeah, just have an right here. Right. Can you hear us, Lorraine? I can hear a little better now. I couldn't hear anything before. I was trying to make out what was being said, but I can hear better now. Yes, thank you. Okay, thanks. All right, well, well Mr. Sainer is looking. I want to open up the floor. The one thing I don't have on the agenda, but I want to make sure that there's an opportunity is for public comment. So if there's anybody here in this meeting that has anything that wishes to, you know, for questions for Mr. Sainer, um, just raise your hand, you'll be recognized, and then you'll have a chance to uh, address. Uh, in reference to your program, uh, you know, I was recently released from the state from county, uh, in the name of the county. Yeah, in my opinion, if I could just speak freely, or as I speak freely, you know, I think it's a process, and I even noticed it at the meeting, just in the moment you started and going through, I mean, it's very fast. That first portion of the meeting that you announced, I don't even, I didn't get any of that. So I don't know really what happened in the previous meeting, but being a newcomer and just sitting in as a local citizen now. In the second part, you're, you're speaking on to the programming and pre-sentencing, is it, is it my correct? Pre-trial. Pre-trial. Yeah. So pre-trial supervision and the assessment, I'm going to assume, of the inmate. Um, you know, me, I was one of those who went through a mental health assessment. And, you know, in regaining my composure and, you know, my state of mind to where I, you know, I was diagnosed with attention deficit hyperactive disorder when I was young. When I was probably 13, I was actually younger than maybe seven years old, somewhere around there in my youth. And going through life, I'm one of those who experienced, you know, early age drug use. So sixth grade, my first time smoking cigarettes and marijuana. Cocaine happened in uh, freshman year. Uh, acid, I think sophomore year. Shrooms, methamphetamine, I mean, you pretty much list it. And I went through it, going through my teenage years and into my 20s. Um, you know, and I, you know, and then having a child at a young age too. Um, my, basically what I'm getting at is my growth was stunted and was immature for many years. And I've been in the state's custody for a lot of those years as well. And the problem that I would tell all of you with the system is that you need more of this. I mean, as much time as I've been involved in the state, and I say this, you know, sadly, I've never sat in one of these meetings with any of you. And I've lived here my entire life. I've been involved in the state, or I've been in custody of the state probably 15, 20 years of my life, and I've never been in one of these meetings. I've never, I mean, the rehabilitation process, and you know, as I referenced here, that's the term that I would uh, use. Within re rehabilitation and gaining your mental health back, you need to get back involved with what's going on um, within society. And, and, wherever that may be where you fit in. For me, I was a carpenter my whole life. You know, so community service, I, you know, it was something I could have been put through. You know, I asked Washburn County about trustee programs when I was there, but was not, I mean, actually I was towards the end. So, I mean, I, I obviously probably had to gain that trust um, to be left out of, let out of myself. But, um, and, that, and that helped, because you get out of that, that block, you get out of that isolation to where you're losing, you know, you speak of mental health. I mean, I was, I was, I was on the borderline where I mean, I was, I was having trouble. Was so a lot of trouble. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I yep. need you to kind of get to the question for Mr. Well, I mean, and then go ahead. I'm just going to finish the words. Go ahead. I apologize for interrupting. In reference to your program, how detailed or how involved are you going to be pre-trial? Are you signing caseworkers so that they're working with them, interact, you know, like yeah, so, like yes, yeah, so, so, and that goes actually into Mr. Chair's question about capacity as well. We talked about a capacity of about 50 individuals who are going to be placed on pretrial supervision. Did you so say 50? 50, 5 zero. So that would allow us to have that one on one uh, interaction. But more importantly, we believe in, in, in the research indicates that really connecting people to community based services is what's the best option for changing that criminal behavior. So again, the criminal justice system has accountability measures that they've got to take care of and that's their responsibility as well but when we're talking about trying to hit that rehabilitation mark uh connecting people to community-based services is really what our goal is to is, to, is going to be right i agree 
Any other questions for Mr. Sainer? Mr. Hobb. Yeah, I guess I just want to make sure, um, you know, before we enter into this, I mean, we've, we've talked about it a lot. Um, we've got everybody at the table that needs to be at the table. Um, just want to make sure, you know, from the court's perspective, from the DA's perspective, from the jail's perspective, um, that we're going to get accomplished what you need uh, accomplished, at least to start with. You know, we did have two employees who provided service to the county, uh, and this is the replacement for those two individuals. So is there any anything that you think is lacking uh, in, in getting uh, this scenario instead of the two employees? Uh, do you have concerns, comments? Um, what's your feeling on moving forward in this fashion? Shut me up if, because I'm new to this, but how many people were serviced before with the two full-time employees? The yeah. best that I can say is that from what I remember Diane saying is that uh, at any given point we had probably 70 to 80 people that right. were enrolled. Um, so obviously that's a concern, but I, but then the, the comeback to that is easily 50 is better than none. The, the concern that I have uh, from the bench is, is we reach that max and, you know, I mean, is it going to be a, a you know, are we, are we going below it or what's stopping from, hey, wait a second, you're putting too many people into it. I mean, we just had uh, a huge bust this weekend where we had uh, 12 people in, uh, in custody and, I, and there was meth and heroin and firearms and, and all of them. And so a lot of people from Minnesota that were up here had no ties to Wisconsin. And so they're sitting in custody. You know, I, I, I mean, we, we've got some serious issues here. But I mean, so, so I mean, I, 50 is great. It, you know, I, I mean, it'll it'll take us a little while to get up there as they come back in, and then by that time we should be having discussions and and, I, and a better idea as to either expand it or how to refine it, uh, things like that. So well, there's a capacity for expansion. So if we sign right. up for whatever we're getting, we're at 50 now, and then we're going to get an update from the tribe in terms of what their contribution is going to be, and so there's going to be a capacity for an expansion. Also looking at other alternatives, you know, possibly tribal court involvement. We're definitely going to be looking at the composition of the community to make sure that we have uh, other stakeholders that have an opportunity to contribute. The one thing that has been the success about the CJCC is that it has had an ability to decrease the jail population down, but that number has not been able to be measured because there's recidivism that happens and then there's also um, COVID has, you know, COVID has impacted the availability of services, but it's not impacted the, the reason why we have, you know, these services. The drug trade has not been impacted, probably has been magnified with the COVID. So, Mr. Johnson, uh, Lieutenant, what is the jail population as it stands right now? Uh, as of today, I believe we're at 74 in-house. Uh, we also have four out on monitor. And so, the 50 that we're looking at, hypothetically, that would be, without this program, those people would probably be back in jail or under some kind of direct court supervision that would require law enforcement's involvement. And then, but with CJCC and along for this, uh, for Justice Point, which was McNamer prior to that, allowing for uh, bracelets and, and other different things that alleviates the jail population. And it allows for, um, allows for admissions into services and what, what we don't have, and Tweed, maybe you can work on this one, is what is the representation from the tribal side in terms of behavioral health? Because there's a disproportionate number of people who are tribal members who are in, and by allowing for Justice Point to facilitate um, treatment prior to conviction, that actually is a goal that we would want to try to get people services faster, and CCS helps, provides for that, Tweed. You can correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're right on. Huh? All right. So, yep. Anyway, that's that's where we're at with this one. Is there any other questions for Mr. Sainer regarding Justice Point, J Judge? I have uh, had lots of attorneys over the last three, four months talk to me about the fact that the stop program aspect of what Diane McNamer did has gone away. And so they have active cases where they have individuals who are charged with OWI offenses that uh, under the normal situation uh, you know before when diane was still here they would have gone through the stop program and under that program that had been established before i uh, was on the bench 
they would be eligible for uh, monitoring, electronic monitoring uh, through uh, the STOP program. And that was, so you'd be sending uh, third offense, fourth offense OWIs um, to Diane McNamer for electronic monitoring rather than uh, cluttering the jail. But that uh, has been stopped. And so we have a large, well, I'm not gonna say a large number, but we certainly have a handful of cases that have, because of this uh, interim here, this kind of this world that we don't know, what, you know what's going to happen. Uh, there, these cases just kind of holding out there until, uh, you know, because I ask, well, what, they ask me what, what's going to happen. And I say, well, you know, I know the county is trying to get uh, back on board, at least with some of the testing and some of the, and have uh, Justice Point come in. But as I sat here, I'm like, do we have any aspect of the, of the STOP program that would, would help them? Or is it just more for drugs? And I guess that's the one thing that, that I see on a, on a regular basis that, that we're not really specifically addressing. I mean, I think we're globally addressing it, but. Yeah, so um, I've, I've, I've heard that Diane talk about the STOP program. And again, the problem for me was when we started having these conversations that sort of not to be tongue in cheek, it stopped, yep. right? So I didn't have anything to compare it to. I think that that population may very well fit into this pretrial population. Uh, going back to your previous conversation about defendants, again, same thing. We're putting our best foot forward as to what volume we can take. If the volume, if we can handle more than 50 people, we're going to be back at the table saying, hey, we can handle 60, okay. we can handle 70. Um, the problem right now is there's no, we're, we're comparing apples to sure. really not a vacuum of information. I just don't know what that is going to look like. So my hope is, is that, um, and well, just so you know, the, the, it, that we could talk yeah, in a yeah, private, absolutely. But, but the stop program was a pretrial, uh, yep. the, the, the uh, traffic offender diversion program. Yep. So the, the, they would go through all of that, uh, the treatment and the programming prior to, prior to entering into a plea agreement. Yeah. And again, that's, that's something that would fit into an evidence-based uh, approach. That's something that we would certainly support. Um, getting people, as mentioned before by Mr. Chair, getting people involved in treatment is, as soon so, as possible. Is right, there's two issues to that one. One is stop was pre predates the CJCC. So maybe Tweed, you can put that on the HH, on the Health and Human Services agenda to see if that's something that, if there's any, um, anything else that could be put in place for that. I know it got inherent or kind of pulled, pulled it into uh, Diane's position because she was running that, it was, it was, that grant was coming to an end and then she was folded in and then that was folded into the CJCC. So if there's something that we can get from the county side or at least have that discussion happen at Health and Human Services so we can figure out where that's gonna go. Um, Cause I don't know why that program came to an end other than that Diane retired. So that could be folded in. Mr. Um, Chairman, would that also be in public safety's realm also? It could be, but if, when uh, we we don't have, we have law enforcement that, re re uh, that reports to that, but um, law enforcement is not the one that administers the stop program. That's usually a counselor, an AODA counselor that comes from social services that comes up to provide that. Is that correct? Or did that in the past? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that, not help. Tenant, you got anything on the stop program that you can add? No, I was well, before I was where I'm at now. I wasn't too familiar with it. Well, we'll put it on public safety. Yes, we will. We'll and public and health and human services. So, Madam Clerk, can you make a note to add a stop program to public safety for the next agenda? All right, um, Mr. Chair, just I'd like to add getting back to Tom's question originally here, too, as far as being you know one of the players here on the jail side. Um, we're very supportive of heading in this direction, look forward to it. We've worked with Nick and uh, his staff with Justice Point, and I think uh, with their expertise and knowledge here and utilizing what has been learned in other counties and even states, I think uh, being in Minnesota as well, um, we look forward to this and I think it's gonna benefit us. It has benefited us and we wanna expand the electronic monitoring program and further programs, programming, and uh, I think we're excited about this heading in a better direction. Is it, in, reference, in reference to electronic monitoring, what is the extent of that? I mean, I, I like bracelets, I understand, say like a phone monitoring, I mean, which is we're all, you know, within disclosure, but uh, like what is the extent of uh, electronic monitoring? I guess why it did tend to be brief within and direct does it have to do with uh, the mental assessment of human interface? If I could state those terms. 
I, I guess I'm not understanding your question as far as who is eligible for it or what? Well, the influence of just conversation and the assessment of health and the monitoring of it. You know, say from my, from my perspective, I'm an inmate, or I was. Now I'm a citizen, but I was, you know, I'm going through rehabilitation. If I was to be put through a program to where I am to be assessed mentally, and then the influence, of st the structure of influence around me that basically documents that influence, is it within you know, you know, human interface to where you're hearing audio you know, where it basically manipulates your thoughts in some way. Let me see. Let me get response. Let me. We, we're I'm we're pressed for time. So yeah, I understand. I appreciate your question. Essentially, what electronic bracelet? It's a bracelet where someone who is incarcerated under normal circumstances meets the criteria that the jail feels that they're not a safety risk. They're issued a device that allows them to track their their location until such time that they're released from the jurisdiction of the uh, of either the court or from from law enforcement. And it's not with it's not it's not with any other other intent. It's just a brace that goes around your ankle, correct? Correct. Yeah. That's, that's correct. Yeah, it's it's for it's for sentence inmates that are right. super eligible that meet our internal requirements for right. So can I, can I make a comment when you're go ahead. Don't go ahead. Uh, okay, my comment is I I have a jury trial set for December seventh. It's an OWI fourth. It was a pre-trial this morning, and one of the big questions that the defense attorney had was what's going on with this program. So will this be in place before the 7th of December? There's a distinct possibility if we can actually get to the motion to make this happen so that we can get it to the county board for approval and then Nick can come back and get it up by tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hoff, what action do we need from the committee? Uh, we don't need any official action other than to get to an understanding on what's going to happen when the county board passes the budget, including uh, this already in there. So, uh, you know, again, this is for us to make sure that uh, he's going to be held accountable to what it is that is expected of him and to clarify what is expected of him. Yes. So we don't go off on the wrong foot here. My sure. question is, sure. well, Mr. Hoff, is when, um, when will this become effective then? We passed the budget tonight, hopefully. Are we waiting until January 1, or are we going to get Nick and Justice Boyd on board? What's your, what's your draft of contract, Mr. Sainer? Um, I, think, I thought we were going to start this October 1st. Yeah, I think I think October 1st was the date that we had. So I think we can make this effective upon approval from the county budget, and, and however long it takes for you to get implemented, which will be way before December 7th. Stop. Yes, we do have budget for the two. Just to be clear, Mr. Helwig, I know I, I know that you want to speak. Mr. Helwig will be after Mr. Hoff. Yes, we do have Thank you. individuals that are no longer here in the budget, so we do have funding to get to the end of the year so we can get started as soon as we're up and running here. Mr. Helwig. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you, Mr. Chair, are you comfortable at this time that uh, we're going to have the same programs or better that we did while uh, Mr. Welch and Diane were running the program. Yes, I'm actually pretty confident. And it's unfortunate that we weren't able to get myself and, uh, and Mr. Schumann and Mr. Sainer in, in a meeting. Um, nothing about that has changed my uh, confidence in reviewing the documents, the contract, and the services that were offered, and in the conversations that have been happening so far. So, is there any other comment on this? Anybody else? Mr. Reed, any comments or questions? You know, it's hard for me to right. hear everybody. That's the, you're on phone. But it's very important that we keep we're moving forward and, and working on any way that we can do this together. We're trying to address the needs that we're seeing coming from the tribal perspective to our people, what's been happening, what we need to correct, showing those results of that report. And um, I think we're heading in the right direction. Council supported, supported that. Tweet, I'm not sure if. Um, the full amount that we were contributing, is that all going to this part or was it being divided? No, our motion was to approve the MOU for three years with an increase of 25,000 a year to total 50,000 a year for those three years. Yeah. And it was gonna yeah. be uh, meant to go to the county for the administration of their CJCC program and justice points involvement. Yeah. Okay. okay. I was just going to report on that, but stay on the phone, Brian. Right. So, Mr. Yeah. Reed, do you have I, any I, questions or anything else on the justice point? 
Mr. No, Mayor. I would agree that any movement on services being offered to uh, alleged defendants or, or people that have been convicted, I think would be helpful to the, not just the county, but but, but just to the whole community uh, of, of, of this area. I, I think just moving forward um, would be would be good. So I, I have nothing besides that to, to add. Mr. Schley? No comment? No questions? No questions. Mr. Helwig? I've said my piece. Thank you, sir. Mr. Hoff? Yeah, so the CJCC is an advisory board, as the chair stated. Uh, so the county board doesn't need uh, anything officially from us, but I would like to make a motion that this body recommends uh, the contract with the justice point as budgeted in the budget. So the uh, county board realizes it's coming for this board. So I have a motion for Mr. Hoff to, uh, to make a motion. A motion for Mr. Hoff recommending the approval of this contract to the full county board at its meeting tonight. I have second. a second. Uh, second, huh? From Mr. Yackel. Judge Yackel. Judge Yackel seconds that. Any other most any discussion on the motion? Hearing no discussion, the call for the vote. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Moving on to number seven, Mr. Schumer. Okay, yes. Tribal Governing Board, our tribal judge and our magistrate met with Nick Saner and Justice Boyne yesterday. Uh, we had an excellent meeting, a lot of questions they asked. He answered almost all of them on Nick. Yep. Um, went very well. Uh, Ms. Bouget made a motion then to Renew our MOU with the county and Justice Point for three more years. As I said, with an additional 25,000 per year to equal 50,000 each year for three years. Uh, passed unanimously. And then I reviewed the MOU from the past and I shared it with our um, legal counsel with the tribe. So you should get together with them and the county so that MOU reflects both everything from both entities. Well, who's well? Your email said that they're drafting their own MOU, or what's well? I deal? I asked him to start it, but to talk to you before we had the final draft. Mm -hmm. Dylan, <laughs> Dylan Lenny. Okay, I will. I will make that conversation happen. All right. So, any other questions for Mr. Schumann regarding the MOU or the tribe's actions? Ms. Bouget, do you have anything you wish to add to that discussion? No, nope, he said everything that was needed to be said. Thank you. Judge Smith, do you have anything you wish to add? No, I don't. Thank you. Judge Dependent? Uh, no, thanks. All right. Um, there's no action for that, correct? Mr. Hoffman? Correct. All right, so we'll just wait and then I'll have a discussion with Mr. Lennon yes. and Mr. Schumann regarding the MOU language. Yep. Um, they did, we did mention some concerns though as far as tribal representation um, on this board. I know we have two TGB members, but we asked for our tribal judge and our magistrate to possibly be involved in these meetings. So you want to increase it by one voting block or you want both of them to be? The only, my only concern with that is that it's going to be hard to get a quorum, quorum going if we, you know, we start moving forward on this one and then Sanders got to report to all these entities. Yeah. So that, that just came I mean, up with I'm a in favor of it. I totally absolutely agree that this should be the counterpart from the tribal component, considering that it's, you know, the majority of the people coming through there are tribal members that are directly disparately being impacted. So, I mean, we'll definitely have this conversation. I guess and if we'll we could add one more. And then I'll speak judge. with Judge Smith if there's an opportunity sometime in the next month, I'll come down and talk to you in your office about what that participation would look like. And then your conversation with Mr. Yaffe would be probably driving on that. Is there any other questions or comments on item number seven from the committee? What would the effective date of the MOU be? Whenever you guys, whenever the okay, because uh, I know this one expires, chair. right? The end so, of well, it, 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 it expires, but the MOU, this would be a, a freestanding MOU, and it only goes into effect when it's ratified by, I would say, the probably the tribal chair and then the county board chair. So, okay. once those signatures are effective, that's the effective date of that. Thank you. Um, and then, and that money is not, it's not hinged on because your but your money, the, the contract is coming out of contract dollars. From the from the county, so this would replenish funds that would have been earmarked for that. So that's not going to stop Sainer from getting work, Mr. Sainer. All right. Hearing no more discussions on seven, we're moving on to number eight. Update on the second courtroom. 
either Mr. Schumann or Mr. Hoff, if you can apprise us of the discussions that happened and where we're at with the second quarter. Yeah, the uh, city, I believe, had a meeting last night. I haven't heard as anyone heard or okay. Um, so they should have on their agenda ratified the agreement that the county board ratified uh, to uh, use the site, uh, the Fifth Avenue site, for an expanded courtroom. Um, and then once the city agrees to that, then we'll start working uh, on that project. Obviously, that needs to happen before we can uh, do anything else, but we'll continue planning what the court looks like. Uh, so that get approved so that we can keep uh, moving ahead on that. So Mr. Schumann, in your capacity then as the, the board chair, what is your position then regarding the, the expansion for the courtroom? If, if there's a ratification from the city of Hayward on the vacation of the Fifth Street area, what is the position then from the county board in terms of moving forward? On well, the then we'll, um, we'll bring it to finance and they'll bring it to us in December at our county board meeting and set up the, what we'll need for debt and borrowing to get this done in a time frame of when we'll start the building. Because I know, Tom, we have to complete California Avenue first. Is that kind of the initial step? Right, we have to complete that first to redo the water main before they can then vacate uh, Fifth Avenue. And then uh, also keep in mind in the 2021 budget, there is an appropriation uh, of two million in the next year to get those things started because that project would, would take an amount of money and the architect would take some money. Uh, so that's in the budget now, uh, the, the debt hasn't been issued, so there is another opportunity for the board to take a look at this and provide that funding. But uh, per their uh, resolution a couple of years ago, they they uh, said they would be providing that financial backing, so we're still moving ahead in this direction. So my concern and my question would be: Is is this the line of uh, demarcation in terms of the project? So once once we get this ratification from the city on the vacation and the and the annexation of whatever that of that property is, is that is that going to be substantial enough action for the for the district court administrator and for the director of the courts to understand that we are committed now to the second courtroom? Mr. Schuman? I would say that's most of it. We still need what three quarter vote to pass borrowing that money. Right. And, and the uh, the court doesn't make their decision until November of 21. So between now and then, we would obviously see more advancements in the plan or not. Uh, so then there's still a scenario, there's still a scenario where if we, if the, if the county commits to this $400,000 project for the, for the annexation of Fifth Street and California Avenue, that the county board would still not have the support or the actions to, to complete the second courtroom. I think that would be all be under the same borrowing vote, Tom. I mean, why would we do California Avenue if we weren't going to go out of the court? We're going to want to tie those to together. The question, and this is no, I know, Chairman, but we're going to want to tie those together so we don't do one without the other. I, I mean, they have to happen together. I agree. Mr. Uh, Judge Apple. The only thing I was going to say is going back to what Tom said was that obviously he said that uh, the director of state court will be making the final selections for the final four circuit courts uh, throughout the state. There's been, uh, last year there was four, or earlier this year there was four uh, that were stated. Um, this November, uh, I think right around now, I think he's already released it, that uh, to begin in 2022, those four have already been named, and now there's a remaining four. And he's going to announce those in November of 21. So obviously, if Sawyer County is in the exact same position as it is in November of 21 as it is now, uh, they're going to bypass Sawyer County and give it to a different county. Um, but obviously, if uh, if project was getting underway, and, and the other date that is re uh, important to remember when the, if the county goes forward in dealing with the completion date, it has to be completed by May 31st of 2023. So I'm assuming if the county, if California Avenue gets done and they're beginning to, to build and Fifth Street's closed, I mean, they're, and they're actually in the process where they have things moving, I'm sure that the, by that time the director of state courts will then select Sawyer County. I mean, they've Mr. already made whether or not the county has has is moving forward with the plans to complete by May of 2023. We have to have a facility ready, correct? But yeah, it has to be completed May 31st of 2023. Mr. Howie. Yeah, I just want to say that, <clears throat> excuse me, 
I think uh, we've all known from the beginning that there was no guarantee that we were going to get the judge, but we were still going to go forward with the building of the uh, additional courtroom, whether we uh, actually get appointed the judge, because uh, I think as a, uh, Judge Ackle knows, we can, that courtroom can still be used by other judges and uh, alleviate some uh, work for him. Uh, can I respond? You, okay. All right. The, the, the uh, director of state courts and the district court administrator have addressed that. Um, the director of state courts has named Sawyer County is as a uh, receiver of the a second judge. The requirement is, is that the county build a facility. There is not a situation that is contemplated that if Sawyer County builds the uh, courtroom under within the time frame as stated, there is not a situation where we will not be receiving a second judge. That has been confirmed by the director of state courts that if Sawyer County builds the appropriate facility uh, in the time frame stated in the bill, Sawyer County will be receiving a second judge. So. So I don't, I don't want to, I don't want you to, the, the only way that you're going to have a courtroom without a second judge is if you delay two or three years and then build one and then, you know, without a, without a bill. And I, I'm, I'm pretty certain that Mr. Howie, and I'm not going to speak for him, was not commenting on the, okay. the selection of the judge was more on the rationale for building the second court. So, um, all right. And then, thank you. And I, and I made a clarif clarifying point too. And so if that was your understanding, Mr. Helwig, I, 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 I certainly understand it. Thank you. Mr. Elwood. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Judge Jackson, uh, question for you. Do you feel that Sawyer County needs a second judge? Well, uh, I'll keep that answer very short. There has been, they, they rank each uh, circuit court throughout the entire state. Um, and that's based on the number of cases filed and the number of judges that handle each case. And for the last three or four years, running Sawyer County has been number one in the caseload. Um, the number of cases that we are, just by example, in Barron County two years ago, each judge in that county had about 160 felony cases assigned to them for the entire calendar year. In that same year, we had over 402 felony cases for one judge county in, in Sawyer County. So you, you can see 160 felony cases assigned to one judge and four, over 400 assigned to another one. If you think each one of those individuals needs a trial, there's more cases than there are a number of days in the year to even be able to process these cases. So that ends up affecting uh, the ability of people uh, in small claims or divorce or the county matters and zoning and other issues to, to have access to the court system. Your Honor, this is the only time I've ever done this in my life. I'm cut you short. So Sounds short good. Answer is yes. Thank you. Otherwise, I keep Any talking. other comments from anybody else? Mr. Lee, do you have any last comments regarding the second courtroom? I do not, thank you. Uh, Lorraine, yes. Lorraine, do you have any, uh, Ms. Bouget, do you have any comments? My only comment would be, I hope that they come to where we won't need a second courtroom. That we can assess those needs that we're seeing in the community. Mr. Schley, do you have any last comments or any comments regarding the uh, second courtroom? No, I am good, thank you. Any other comments from the from anybody from the committee? All right, I'm going to close out discussion on that one. Date for next meeting is looking at December 9th at noon. That's a Wednesday. And the purpose of the meeting would be to give an update from Justice Point to see how the services are going and making sure that uh, the staff program is up and running. December 7th, uh, day that we'll live in it. So December 7th? Um, so December 9th, yeah. December 9th, 9th is a Wednesday at noon. Okay. With that, um, if you have any objections, let Mr. Hoff know. Otherwise, I want to thank everyone's participation and this meeting was adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, everybody.